Hello everyone, I'm Sharon Jitkor from Advox Law LLC. I'm a lawyer and I specialize in family law for the last 27 years. I'm Natalie Indra, a realtor of over 17 years, and I've helped clients with regards to their property matters. One of the pressing questions that clients have today is, you know, when it comes to death, it's beyond our control. When a loved one passes away, say for example, parents, right? Aged parents living together, husband and wife in their 70s living together, husband passes on, wife is the surviving owner right she gets confused what happens to the property and then children they come in intervene and add on to the confusion <laughs> so they think when there's a debt in the family a flat can be sold overnight a property for that matter may it be HDB or private so this is where it will be good to hear from you as to the importance of engaging a lawyer like yourself and how it helps them let's take an example of a husband who passes away the wife will be the one who gets the house if she was a joint owner okay but if the house was owned in tenants in common then she doesn't get automatically his share uh, rather his share will be uh, distributed as per his will or the interstate act if there is no will why don't you explain to our clients what is the difference between a joint tenancy and a tenancy in common okay. because these are two areas which many do not know and they just um, I don't want to use the word blindly but without knowing they purchase properties and only to realize later that what they thought was a joint tenancy was a tenancy in common or vice versa right. so your explanation in okay. that so would help. tenants in common is not a common thing that happens when a part when parties get married and purchase a flat but it is something that uh, people do and it's getting more um, acceptable nowadays. A uh, tenants in common basically means we both own the property but how much and to how what extent you own and I own is specified very clearly such that when I pass on my share assuming I'm 40 and you are 60 my 40% doesn't go to you unless I've willed it to you. Mm. My 40% will go to whoever I have willed it to yes. or to my estate in accordance with the intestate act if I don't have a will. The importance of a will cannot be um, understated. Yep. Okay. Um, because uh, the will determines how you want things to be distributed or whom you want your estate to be benefited to uh, in, in your, after your lifetime. So um, the will is actually the very first step one takes yes. in order to prepare themselves for any unforeseen circumstances. Correct. So, right so you that. are right. That there are a lot of questions when it comes to the property matters once the legal parts are addressed, right? So say for example a HTB. Now, if I am a child of, of, of a parent who's, who has passed on and the HDB um, is available, now if I'm the owner of an existing property, say for example, if I'm the existing owner of a HDB, I will not be eligible to inherit the HDB property of my parent who has passed on. Secondly, if I am the owner of a private property and if my parent has passed on with the HDB available, then I would need to um, find out whether I have the capacity to own the HDB being the rightful owner of a private property. Because now with the recent cooling measures and rules that are changing consistently through our government, we need to know our eligibility scheme to own a HDB. Whereas if it's a private property that's left behind by my parents and I'm the existing owner of a private property, yes, I can possibly inherit that private property as well. The next topic that a lot of our clients experience would be home ownership during divorce right yes. and you would be a great person to address this because your clients mostly approach you when it comes to divorce so perhaps you could share with us what should our clients know when it comes to owning a property during a divorce or what happens to their property during a divorce so assuming we act for one spouse then of course you know if they have assets that are in the form of a property um, it could be joined, it could be in the name of one person or it could be with the name of another person, not even the, the husband or the wife. As long as it is a matrimonial asset, the court would want it divided. And when we say divided, it can take the form of either one party taking over it as a transfer or 
them selling it. Um, sometimes they don't actually um, satisfy the minimum occupation period, so they cannot sell it. So it has to be a transfer to the other party or to have it surrendered back to HDB if it's a HDB flat, right? Got it. And then there will be a consent order mm. and then the court will acknowledge um, the orders that they have agreed and um, as long as they are just and equitable, mm -hmm. okay? I won't go into the technicalities. Yes. Um, or if the court makes a decision, you know? So there must be an order and then when they get a final judgment, mm. okay? So once all these things are sorted out, the final judgment is the only document that they need and the only and very important document that's needed before they can actually uh, act on what is agreed or what is ordered by the court. Yeah. But between the time they, they first start the proceedings and they go for mediation and when they decide finally or the court decides if they can't decide for themselves, during this process, it is important for them to know and address issues of whether, you know, the flat can be transferred, whether they, if it's sold, you know, how long the process is going to take because these are things that are going to be in the order and then after the order is made, they have the final judgment that comes in. So again, I emphasize that without the final judgment, you cannot deal with the property during a divorce. I mean, if it's just a husband and wife going through a divorce, I think it's a lot more straightforward. Right. But when it comes with children, it gets emotional and complicated. So that's why we need to clearly define on um, the joint custody and the care and control. So as long as that party who's planning to purchase the next flat is able to form a family nucleus, yes, definitely the elig eligibility to own the HDB is there. Whereas there are no restrictions for private property per se. Right. Um, these are two subjects that is beyond our control in life. Death, yes. divorce, uh, it happens. It's it's becoming frequent these days, right? Yes. Especially with divorce. It's good to know the know-hows and um, the essential components before embarking on the process. And that only happens by speaking to professionals like yourself and myself, right? And to plan and to be very clear-headed during the process and not just get emotionally caught into it. And then after that, you know, the whole thing falls apart. So it's not about saving cost, but you know, it's about when, when you speak to professionals like, like, like you, you know, to find out the, the legal components, the detailed legal components, the timeline, and then after that coming to rea realities to know the process of selling or even affording the next property would only make it hassle-free and make the outcome possible for everyone.